Okay, Maureen Baker here, and it is July in New England, and it's nice and warm, and the sun is out, and it's beach weather. And I live about 40 minutes from the seashore, and I spend a week up there on vacation. And we've had some great times and some great experiences. I thought it would be awesome to do a, a retake on a project that I did that was really well received. And I thought, oh, I'll do it again. And we'll post it on my YouTube account and you'll be able to look at it again and again and again. Um, I think that they get taken down now after three months. And um, I thought it would be fun to do it again. So. We're going to do this in watercolor and I'm going to switch you back over to my paint table and you can take a look at my paint table and this is the piece that we're going to do and it's called sailing all right and we are going to do it in watercolor I have the tendency to use Windsor Newton watercolor I'm going to move these all right <clears throat> um, I have the tendency to use when I usually use Windsor Newton watercolor um as long as they're available so the palette is pretty simple it's only got uh five colors and we're going to do this beautiful piece with just five colors this is titanium white this is cobalt blue this is prussian blue this is permanent rose this is burnt sienna and this is called new gambage those of you that are not familiar with um Watercolor, it's beautiful yellow. It's a beautiful yellow. It's not super, super, super bright, but um, it's, it's pure yellow. It's really a nice yellow. Um, the brushes that we're gonna use are water lily brushes, okay? Uh, we're gonna use a three quarter inch. We're gonna use a, a quarter inch or a flat or a six flat. We're gonna use a six round, which is gonna be, we're gonna do a lot of work with the six round. And then we're gonna use a liner brush. And these are water lily brushes by Dynasty. And I love them. Okay, they're a great watercolor brush. All right, unlike acrylic, I'm just gonna put out a cup of water. Okay, this is, and I, I'll do it right in the corner. Okay, I hope it does it. Okay, watercolor moves. Watercolor, this was painted a year ago, and we are going to move it now. Let's take this flat. And a paper towel. All right. And I can take this paint now, a year later, and I can move this paint. All right, it is not, there we go. It takes, a, it takes a little while. All right, so I can soften it out and move it. I can take the edge of it. Okay, once acrylic dries, it's done. There, and I can see that. Can you see that softening out? Softening out that edge. I can. This is a year ago that I painted this. And that's something that you want to remember about watercolor that's a little different. Those of you uh, that are watching are usually painting in acrylics. All right. So it never fully dries out. It's always movable. It can always be moved. Um, and the result of that is that um, it, it's not as staining as acrylic. It doesn't have the components that acrylic has in it. So you just need a simple cup of water and you don't, um, these are brushes are a little bit more delicate than our traditional acrylic brushes and you don't need to scrape the bottom of it. The paint will come right off. If the paint, if you use it just for, if you use these, these if you have a set of brushes that you use just for watercolor, if you soak them in, um, if the paint dries in them and you soak them the next day, it's going to come right out. Okay, and you, so you can go in and 
you can make some adjustments a year later, a year later. And some of us change the way we paint over a year. Um, sometimes I don't make a lot of changes in the way I paint for, for a while. And then all of a sudden I'll, I'll just decide that I'm gonna try some very new things and I paint very differently. All right, so you wanna keep that in mind. And um, like I said, you don't want to, um, you don't wanna scrape the bottom of it in a water bucket or anything like that. So we are gonna get started. I do use 300 pound watercolor paper. When I first painted in watercolor and I started in watercolor years and years ago, I had just, I had, just um, had my daughter. I, she was an infant when I started to paint. Um, and I didn't want any toxins around her. So I painted in watercolor. Uh, and we used to use 140 pound paper. This one is on 140 pound paper. And you can see, if you look at it, that the edges are curled. And when you're working, that can even curl even more. So I just resolved in my head that I'm gonna work on 300 pound watercolor paper. And unless you can really, 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 really saturate it, it's going to stay uh, nice and flat for me to work on. Uh, I do work watercolor very flat. Uh, I use a lot of glazes, all right? So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my three quarter inch flat or wash brush and we'll start in the sky and we're gonna wet it up in the sky. All right, with this three quarter inch wash. Three quarter inch wash or three quarter inch flat. All right. And we're gonna come all the way down. I put little marks this is the horizon line. All right. And there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. Okay. That's the other thing is that this paint, this is enough paint to probably paint 10 of these. All right. Um, and I'm going to bring out the cobalt blue. And we're going to start up in this corner. And I'm just going to wash it in. All right. You don't work really dark and you do need to see it. We don't work really dark. We do wa numerous, numerous washes. This is not acrylic. This is watercolor. We're working with a lot of water. And we're gonna layer that paint in and we're gonna soften it out, okay, with lots of water, okay? Now, I want you to think about something because there's going to be some yellow in this sky. And if I bring in that yellow into the blue, it's going to turn the sky green. And I, it's unusual in New England for a sky to be green. So I think that that's walked down far enough because I really want to put that yellow in. So I'm going to go across the horizon line right over my graphite. And I am going to work that up and I'm going to put some blue right on the horizon line. All right, and soften it out. And just and it your um, watercolor will harden up. Okay, it will definitely harden up. And um, you just put a spritz of water on it and it's good to go. That is a little cocked and that's all right. So I'm just gonna go in here like this and soften it out. There. Soften out that line. There, okay. I did get some on the sale and I do use, unlike in the old days, I do use white. So I'm not gonna worry too much, but I'm gonna lift some of it off. All right. Then I'm going to take this quarter inch, or you can use a six. All right. And up in here, we're going to put a little bit of a streak. Now, this is a wet on wet method. We're going to put a little bit of a streak into the sky. 
All right. I'm going to switch back to the three quarter. There we go. Because I want this area to be a little bit darker. All right. And I don't want it to be perfectly across. So I'm going to just soften it out. Okay. Just soften it out. I do have kits available on uh, my website for this. I'll put the link down um, when I post this to the YouTube channel. All right, and you can get the kit that will include the pattern, the paint, and the water watercolor paper. All right, now we're gonna go into a little bit of new gambage. And as I said earlier, you wanna be a little careful all right, because if we mix the yellow, I want the yellow in there, but if I bring it up too close to the intense blue, it's gonna turn the sky green. And there was no green in this sky. It was a beautiful summer day that I took this picture. I took this picture off Rye Harbor when I was on a boat uh, going out towards Star Island years and years and years ago. All right, and that is really pretty. That is definitely pretty, I'm liking it. I do think that I'm gonna put a little bit more blue up in here. Now I've got my yellow in, I wanna be careful with it as I walk it down, all right. I don't want that blue mixing with the yellow. We don't want green in our sky. There, yeah, that's a little bit more intense. Now, and there's something you need to remember when you're working with watercolor. And that is that when you work with acrylics, acrylics dry an entire value darker. Watercolor dries an entire value lighter. So it's a little bit different to get used to. And you can always go in and darken it. I'm going to put a little bit of permanent rose up there. Not a lot. It's a summer sky. We're going to put a little bit of permanent rose. Okay. It's just a hint of pink up there. All right. See, just a hint of pink. All right. Now, down here on the horizon line, I am going to put in some serious amount of pink. I'm going to walk that up. I think this was probably taken with my kids on the, at night, not night, dusk, on our way to watch some fireworks in a boat. It's kind of cool. So it would have been dusk. And that's where all this pink is coming in. Soften it out. Now I wanna show you something before we go any further because it's something to keep in mind. Um, now, if you put a lot down, you can add some water to soften. See, that's a little stark. And I'm gonna just drag it out. Make sure I have a good damp brush not dripping, but definitely lots of water in it. All right, there we go. As we're working the painting, I can go back in there and, and do some more on that again. And I want you to look at something. All right, if you look at these two paintings, there's this one, and then there's this one. And if you look at them, I don't know if I can do that. You can pretty much do that. Side by side, they're a little different, okay? And they're gonna be. And that's, that, that makes them yours. That makes them nice, okay? So they don't have to be exactly the same. Now, I do work in, um, in uh, watercolor. I work, I tend to work, hold on to the, as much light as I can. And I don't work from dark to light. I work from light to dark. So the first color that we're going to put in this water is going to be uh, cobalt blue. And if I look 
I want to have a reflection of the sailboat um, sail down into the water. Okay. So if I if I uh, if I lose too much of it, I can always add some white to it, and I don't have to worry. On the horizon line, the horizon line is a little bit darker. Okay. I don't want it to be uh, a harsh line, but I want it to be a distinct area where you know that that's where the water starts. And I'm going to go in here. And that's where the sky, where the sky and the water come together. All right. Now, see, that's a little bit of a harsh line. So I'm going to just soften that out a little bit. But I'm still going to know that the water starts there. See how I just softened it out? Watercolor can be very relaxing. It's also, I do have to tell you, that it is not as forgiving um, as acrylics, and it is not as forgiving as oils. Oils is, are, is a, can be forgiving if you have the patience to wait for the paint to dry. All right, it can definitely be forgiving, um, but you do have to be patient. Watercolor is a little bit less forgiving. But if you just relax and enjoy it, you'll do you'll you'll have lots of fun and enjoyment out of it. All right. So there's the first. Now see right here we got a little bit dark, so I'm going to lift that off. Okay. I'm going to just go in there with the edge of my brush and lift it off because I do want to have a reflection of the sail. And then we're going to come down and we're going to put in. Now, the one thing that you have to realize is as the as the ocean comes closer to me, even though I was in a boat, the further away it is, the less detail I'm going to be able to see. OK, I do want to soften this out, even though it's going into the white area. All right. So the further away that I am the less detail there's gonna be. Okay. You think I'll wet this down? There. And it's gonna be more of a middle value, the further away that it is, the more of a middle value it's gonna to, going to appear. And as it comes closer, I'm gonna have higher lights and higher darks and deeper darks. And if you notice there's a variation in the intensity of paint, which there would, there's a variation in the intensity of dark and light in the ocean. Now, I am going to lift again. And you can take your brush and you can measure off. So you should lift all the way down to here because it's a direct reflection in the water. So it's gonna be as long as the sail is. I'm just gonna lift it off. Soften it out. And I want to keep it going in one direction. This was a very calm, serene day. We don't want curves, um, big curves. As it gets closer and we put in the the waves, um, that's one thing, but you don't want out here, 
where it's where it's further away from us and we have less detail excuse me i don't want a lot of curvature out there we want to go straight across and even with the waves we, we still want to go straight across all right and that looks good that's looking good um i can dry it so that um i think i will put a little bit more up in here and i don't yeah there i don't want it to be a line you want to be careful of that yellow there I'm going to clean that brush off good so that I can just soften that out into the yellow. And I think I'll intensify the yellow a little bit too. Way down here. There, nice. So New Gambage is yellow. It's very yellow. Um, it's got a, a goldenness to it though. Um, that's kind of nice. It's not a uh, light uh, lemon yellow. It's a yellow yellow. Here we go. Now, I do think that, um, I think I'm going to dry it. And even though I can move it after it dries, um, it's a little tougher to move if it's bone dry. Because I want to do a little bit more to this sky. See how flat that's laying? That 300 pound watercolor paper makes a big difference. There, okay. There. Okay, now um, I do have pink down in here and I'm gonna intensify the pink just a little bit in a couple of spots right here. And I want to do a little bit of blue because it's not super, super pink as much as it is purple. Yeah. Walk it up into the sky. There, isn't that pretty? Now I wanna show you there's a blossom over here and we're not gonna worry about it because we're just gonna go in and we're gonna add some blue and we'll adjust it out. There we go, that's a little dark and we'll just pull it down. There, okay. And that's good. All right, we're going to start to intensify the wave action a little bit. And I'm going to go in with my small brush and I'm going to intense use a little bit of intense paint. What we've done up until this point is been washes. Okay, we are going to put in some actual wave action back in here. But we're going to make sure that we keep those waves a little bit small. I don't have to dry it. All right. I'm just going to bring in some waves. All right. And some movement into the water a little bit. Okay. And we're going to bring some of this out from the boat. Now watch this, if it gets too much, I think that's a little much. I'm just gonna soften that out with a little bit of water and not worry about it. There we go. So some of it is a tighter stroke. And if it got, if I put, I felt like I put a little too many in there, so I just softened them out. And that's the beauty of watercolor. That is the beauty of watercolor. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to put in some strokes. 
And this is the wave action in the water, okay? As you come down here, they're gonna be a little bit bigger. They're gonna be a little bit more distinct. Waves do, uh, there is some wave action that's gonna, needs to be in where the sail is. Not as prevalent. Okay, further away, the smaller you see, soften it out. This is all being done at this stage with cobalt blue. Okay, we haven't gone into any of the other colors. Now that is too big for being that far out. So we're just gonna lift that off and soften it out and not worry. See that? Just chill and enjoy. Okay, these are coming in much closer to where I am, where I was in the boat. So they're gonna be much bigger and they're gonna be bigger all around. So they're gonna be wider and they're gonna be longer. And you want that to be gradual. So it went from barely being able to see the movement in the water and it gets a little bigger and a little bit more distinct to really being able to see waves. Yeah, so there's no real pattern, okay? If you start to see too much of a pattern, you need to make some changes. <clears throat> there isn't a distinct two to one ratio. Two on this side, one on this side, two on this side, one on this side. It's really just here and there and here and there and not a distinct pattern. Okay, and we're gonna come in like this. And these are gonna be even bigger. They still soften out. And they soften both ways. And I say both ways, they soften out this way and they soften out this way. And remember, if you forgot to soften it out like I did this one, that's all right. You just go back in and soften it out. I think that we'll put in one more down in here. And this one can be a small one. Let's be part of that one. There we go. If you did this three times, it would be a little different each time you did it. And that's good. That is good. Look at that. Now I am going to soften out the backs a little bit so there's not too much of a distinct line. A little bit. Okay, at this stage. I'm also going to just make this a little bit more distinct up in here. Um, can't see that there. Just a little bit more and I'm going to soften it out with my big three quarter inch. But I'm going to make that a little more distinct. It's just going to add a little bit more interest to the sky. All done in cobalt blue. You put Prussian blue in the sky and it's going to turn it stormy and there's not going to be anything you're going to do about it. You want to be careful about that. You want to keep. You want to keep it uh, in cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is the light one. I do want to soften that up. See, it makes it a little bit more interesting sky. There. All right. All righty. Now, this area right in here with the smaller brush, I'm gonna soften it out. I want it to kind of stay away from the sail, but I don't want a distinct harsh line in the water. As much as I wanna stay away from the sail, remember I have white, 
I do have white. That used to be a no-no, and I just use it. There. Very awesome. Very awesome. Very awesome. Now, I'm going to, okay, right here, I, um, it's uh, the blue went up in here. I lost some of this harsh line when I just did that. I want to just soften that up. And I might let it dry and go at it again. Okay, I'm going to dry it. Now remember, even after I dry it, I can still move it. All right, this also needs to be straightened out just a little bit here. Got a hump in the horizon line. We don't want a hump in the horizon line. And I don't want to use a real lot of water. And I have a, I'm using a pretty light touch so that I don't lift too much paint. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take burnt sienna. And I'm going to do this very lightly. Okay, we're just going to start to form the sail a little bit. Now I want to show you a trick here. On this sail, the sail is white. I'm going to soften out this graphite just a little bit. So it's not quite so stark. And I don't want to do, I don't want to be rough with it. I just want to lighten up that pencil mark, those graphite lines. Okay, you got to remember I also dried it. So it's not going to break down the paper. They're not going to completely go away. And that's all right. We're going to start with burnt sienna. Okay, we're going to bring the burnt sienna out like this. All right, and I'm going to do this dry. I'm going to come down against the mass and I'm going to soften it out. And the darkest area, I'm going to leave against the mass. Okay. Here we go. All right, and then we're going to come down on this side. This is dry, okay? This is a dry technique. So there's no water in the pen on the paper. Might be a little damp from all the work that we did, but it's not a wet on wet the way we did up here, okay? It's not dry brushing, but it's not a wet on wet. Okay. And we're going to go like that against there, against the line. Okay. And then we're going to, on the boat, we want to separate the front from the back. And we're going to make sure we get that done with that little, little tiny lip back there. 
All right. And that's good. And we're going to let that dry. All right. I do think we're going to do one more thing here. And I'm going to use a liner brush to do it. Because I want a very small amount of paint, a little bit detailed right here. I'm going to lay the paint down with my liner brush. Oh. And I'm going to go in like this. Okay. Nope, you're going to be able to see it. So I laid my line of brush right against there and pulled it in. And this is the line that's the back side of the boat is up in here. Okay, and you see those streaks? They're coming this way and this way. It's good. We're not going to put the people in yet. Okay, the next thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the sky and I'm going to say, am I loving it? Is it done? And I think my sky is done. I think it's pretty cool. I think I really like it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I am going to bring in just a little bit more cobalt blue to the background to the back of the ocean, not to the background. Um, right in here, we're gonna bring in just a little bit more cobalt blue into the water. Okay, not on the sail. Softly touch around it. Okay, use some water. Soften it out. Good. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'm going to really define. I decided on this one, I really want to define the horizon line. Come across. Yeah. Now, one of the things, because I made that so much, a little bit darker, I want to make sure that I, I have some dark in here too. And I'm doing it with a small brush. It's a flat. Yeah, we want, and that brings the boat forward and the behind back. Okay, now what we do want to do, we want to remember that this is a reflection. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in some very trans, you know, I know I'm going to use a lot of paint. I'm going to bring in some transparent. And remember how what I said, take the end of your brush, go like this, and that's how far down it will go into the water. Okay, like that. And the reflection is going to go all the way up into here. It's much wider at the at the base because this the sail is wider at the base. All right. So it's wider at the base. And then it comes up like that. All right. And then I've got a little intense. So I'm just going to lift it. I'm just going to look at it and lift it up. Okay. And that's good. Yeah. All right. Now, the next thing that we want to do is I want to make sure that I have some water that comes through on the 
reflection area. It does, um, it, it, it's not all white. All right, so we're gonna put in some streaks of cobalt blue in here before we bring in our white, okay? I don't want these lines too big. So I just lifted it off where it was a little too wide. All right. I'm gonna take my bigger brush again and soften it out. Just soften it in to the blue area. There we go. And that water's starting to look awesome. I'm going to intensify back here just a little tiny bit. These are small strokes, further away, less detail. Okay, as you get closer, it's going to get bigger, a little bit wider. A little bit less water in my brush because I want it a little bit more defined. And I'm also defining the boat. This is pretty dry and I'm very, very lightly going to put a couple of strokes of cobalt blue into the sail. Just because it would have some reflection in the sail of the ocean. There. All right. I think that's good. Now, see this? This is a little bit too, needs to be softened out a little bit. further away. Okay, this area down here now is pretty dry. So we're gonna go in and we're not gonna use a ton of water and we're gonna go in with some cobalt blue and really uh, start to build what's closer to us into an, a real ocean because um, it wouldn't have that much light. And if I don't push down real hard, uh, I won't lose any of the work that I've done. All right. You can still see all my waves that I was working on. There, that's much better. I don't want it liney. I don't want it stripy, soft transitions. Just gently, softly mop it out with the same brush. You don't need a mop. Okay, that's good. We're good. We're getting there. All right. I am going to dry it. I'm drying it mainly because I don't want what's there to move easily. I want it to have to be pushed on to move it. Even though if I push hard enough, I'm going to move it. Okay. Now there's no Prussian blue in the sky. This is a beautiful summer evening. Okay. There is Prussian blue in the water. And we're going to do this a little carefully. I'm going to take my small brush, quarter inch R6 flat. Um, it's one in the same, okay? There's a quarter inch wash or a six, uh, number six flat, not a six inch 
okay? This is very intense color, okay? And where the bow is trailing in the water, we're gonna go into this Prussian blue. And we're gonna put that in very carefully, okay? We're gonna put a little in over here. And we don't want it to be just stuck there because it will look funny. We want, a, we want soft movement of color, all right? A soft movement of color, all right? I don't have hardly any water in my brush because I wanna soften this out a little bit. There, that's better. Tuck it under the boat, okay? And I'm gonna take a, just a little bit of this, not a lot. And I'm gonna put some out in here. Okay. And this is as it's getting closer now. So this is gonna get a little wider. It's gonna get a little darker. I'm gonna put some over in here. This is Prussian blue. Further away it is, the less wide, the less intense it is. Okay, there we go. Now these are the big ones, okay? So they're gonna to start to get bigger. And I'm gonna soften this out. Soften it off the back. Now I'm gonna use some pretty intense Prussian blue as I'm moving closer to where I am. Closer it gets to me, the darker and more detailed it gets. Okay, I don't want it dragging like that. I want, I didn't have enough water there. I'm just gonna add some more water and it'll soften it right out. It'll be fine. And there we go. I'm gonna pull this big brush. I'm working a little bit bigger now. Now down in here in this corner, I'm gonna put in some real Prussian blue. Walking it up. Okay, Prussian blue has a little bit more green in it. <clears throat> You gotta be careful when you first put it on your brush. It's gonna be really intense. We have a little bit of blossoming going on here from the watercolor and that's okay. It's gonna look great with that. I am gonna gently bring some of this up into here, into the back. To the distant.
there we go. Now, I am gonna bring a little bit of dark into here. I lifted a little bit off. I felt like it got too big on me. Okay. And then I'm going to go in again. No, oh, it's soaking wet. I'm going to dry it. Remember, even though it's water, even though I'm drying it, it can still move. It's watercolor. There. All right. And then we're going to. Go in, this is Prussian blue that we're putting in. I didn't dry it quite enough. There we go, that's looking good. Now this, I don't want to get it too dark up in here, so I'm going to go with cobalt. And then at the very crest of the wave, I'm going to put in some Prussian blue. There we go. Soften it out. Rest of the wave, bring in the Prussian blue and soften it out. into here. I'm going to do this on all the waves. Okay, and remember as they get closer to me, they're going to get bigger. You can keep a separation there, there. Soften it out with that big wash brush. I'm going to go into a little bit of cobalt blue up in here. This got way too light. And that's because the lights and the darks have a relationship. So when I intensified that dark, that made that light look even lighter than it. Okay. And then I'm going to come in over here. And I want to try to start to have a little bit more definition to what's happening as it gets closer to me. Um, All right, and, and there'd be a, quite a bit of wave action. Okay. You have to remember there has to be a gradual change as you move back. So there's a lot of big, big waves here. And so we need to put in some medium waves. <clears throat> and I do want this corner to be a little bit darker. I think I'll use a big brush. 
there. Ooh, it's a little dark. Press the base. There. That's good. Soft transitions, watercolor is great for soft transitions. Okay, as we move back up into here, we're gonna put in some more Prussian blue up in here. And we wanna be a little careful that we don't get real dark up there. We do want some transition to happen, but we don't want it to get real dark up there. Keep this straight across. You don't want curvature in this. These are straight strokes, straight across. And then we are gonna put in just a little bit more uh, so that we do have some transition. These are much thinner. They're not quite as dark, but we do want some transition. Okay, because we wanna create the illusion of distance. The further away it is, the less detail we see. So the waves are the same size back there, but we don't see them that way. We're gonna soften this one up. That one got a little too big for where it is there. See how it still moves. We go. There. And that is a little dark. We're just gonna take some of that off. There we go. And just tap, tap, tap and lift it off. There. And intensify some of these darks down in here that are really close to us. Careful with how much water you're using at this stage. Soften it out, soften it out, soften it out. Okay, this had a little too much water, so we're gonna do a little work to it. And then I'm gonna go in and I am gonna dry. Okay. Now this is paper. So what that what ends up happening there is that the paper gets the water gets deep into the paper so it's going to take a little bit more a little bit more drying to get really get it nice and dry. Okay, there's one thing I want to do before we put the white into the 
sale is I'm going to go in with a little tiny bit of new gambage, which is the yellow. And I'm going to put some yellow in that sale. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow right here in the water. You want to be careful with that because you don't want the water turning green. This is New England. It is not the Caribbean. There. That's good. Now I'm going to go in again. And that's, we're going to work on this side a little bit. And I'm going to go in again. And I'm going to intensify. these waves. And yes, I did just do that. It's almost like a C stroke. And it does do that. There we go. And as I go in, this is with my three quarter inch, I'm going to intensify this area down in here a little bit. Add some water to my brush. Get another paper towel. You're working with a lot of water. There. So you gotta have paper towels. And again, we're gonna go back up into here. Remember it dries darker. There. Soften it out where it needs to be softened out. There's no real gap, stop gaps in the ocean. The waves come in and they gradually move into each other. That's what's wonderful about the ocean. This area needs a, is a little too light. <clears throat> And it's becoming beauteous. It is becoming beauteous. You know, and some days when I paint in watercolor, I'll paint this whole picture with um, a, a six round. I was in the mood to use flats today. And the most important thing when you paint is that you are comfortable. So um, I don't, I very rarely use angles. I painted with a woman that was a friend, of, a good friend of mine, painted for years with her. And she only painted in angles. Only painted in angles. I don't, I very rarely use angles. I'm gonna lift just a little bit of that off. There we go. I think that's looking awesome. It has to be at a point where I feel that I'm pretty much done with the water before I can start to bring in the white. I am going to do something on this one that I didn't do on the other ones that I want to do because it's really there. 
Okay, and I could mess with these waves forever and ever. It's my new thing. I love the ocean. We're going to be at the ocean next, not next week, the week after. Yeah. Just a little bit more detail here and there. This is all being done with Prussian blue. Okay, and that's good. I'm liking it. And if you look at it, comparison to the others, it's different and that's okay. Okay, one of the things that um, I do think I will do is I'm gonna flip it around now and I'm gonna very carefully with this three quarter inch, I'm gonna go into a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm gonna soften this out just a tad. That horizon line is a little stark for me. There, soften it out just a tad. Light touch. Soften this side out, just a tad. Light touch. And it does need to be gradual. Bring it up into the sky. Remember, stay away from that yellow that you've got in the sky. There. That's a little softer. It's not quite as stark. I think that's much better for an evening sky. There. There, it's better, okay? Now, I'm gonna take my liner brush and I'm going to go into Prussian Blue and I'm gonna use this as paint. This is not a wash. This is gonna be detail. I roll the brush in my finger between my thumb and my forefinger. All right. And I'm gonna do this very carefully. We're gonna come up the sail with the lines. The harder, the more pressure you put, on the line of brush, the thicker the line's gonna be. Okay, that's good. I like that. Okay, I know you're probably saying you are kidding me, but that is good. I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna go into some white. Okay, I'm gonna get some white going here. So because it's hard as a rock, I have to, I put some water on the paint, okay? Now watch that line that you look at and that you say you are kidding me because you don't want an X that marks the spot on your painting. I'm gonna go in with white and I'm gonna just skip over it here and there, which is what would happen in the sun. You'd have reflections. And it's not solid. Have reflections of the sun. And it's not solid. There we go. And that's good. I'm gonna go into the white. <clears throat> Again, I'm gonna use my six flat. I'm gonna go from the outside edge and I'm gonna streak up into the, into the sail. It's not the mask, it's the sail. All right, streak up into the sail. Yeah. All right, now 
I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some work on the water because I want to make sure that I have this reflection in here. All right, and it's doesn't, it's not a solid marking. Okay, you're gonna just streak it in so that you have some of the water showing through, some of the brown showing through, and a reflection in the water of the sail. All right, this is Windsor Newton White. Okay. Okay, I want a little bit more ocean in there showing through. I'm going into cobalt blue, not Prussian. And I'm going to streak some cobalt blue in there. And you can go back and forth with this a couple of times. Make sure you stay away from the yellow with the cobalt blue. Soften it out. I think that's good. Soften out these edges. Right under the boat, we're going to make sure that the boat's seated in the water and it doesn't suddenly look like it's floating in air. I did that first with Prussian blue. I'm going to go in with cobalt and really make sure that we seed it. There. Yeah, that's good. All right, um, the sail, the mask that I did this time, um, it's a little too dark for my liking. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna do the white one more time to soften it out. There, much better. It's much better. All right, I did put two people in the boat. All right. And um, one of them, I'm going to do this with Prussian blue. And I, I, you can't see the people. All right. So you just want to um, do this by just putting in a simple, but it's at an angle. All right, and then this one is a little bit taller. And he's also at an angle. It's the hint, the mind will pick it up. It'll figure it out. I think the sail got a little bit big, so the body has to be increased of the boat. So we're gonna bring this out a little bit. do that with my flat. Okay. 
and it's all right. There, much better. Makes much more sense. We go back in there with my burnt sienna and shade the end of the bow. I think that's good. I think we're good. I think we're in great shape. Um, it did. I'm going to put just a little bit more white right in the water. Just like that. A little bit more white. Yeah. That's good. All right. And I think that's great. I think I'm liking it. All right. And I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, if you did this three times, it'd come out a little bit different each time. This time it was a little bit more intense. Okay. This time it was a little less intense. Water down here was a little more intense. Okay. And they're all beautiful. Okay. They're all really beautiful pieces. I do recommend if you look at this 300 pound watercolor paper, and I do have a kit uh, for you if you want to, if you want a kit, I'll put the link up on my website. I put, I'll put the link up on the YouTube channel. And you can just click on it if you want. And we do carry the water lily brushes on the website. I'll give you a link to the water lily brushes also. There, I think that needed to happen. There, just soften it out just a little bit. Okay, and thank you so much for stopping by and stay tuned because we will keep putting up, I will keep putting up some nice YouTube less, on, lessons on this YouTube channel and uh, it'll just keep getting better and better. And the good thing about, about it is as of right now, we can leave them up for indefinitely. So you can paint it and and come back and look at it in three days, four days, three months, and make adjustments and look at the video again. And it's just awesome. Okay, thanks for stopping by.